to Rock Crawl and Jeeps outside again. Um, so last week, last video, whatever you want to call it, we got my Artec truss set down on the Sterling. Today, we're working on being able to set one down on my High Pinion 60 here. Um, as you can see, we have been cutting all of this crap off the truss. Um, not off the truss, off the axle itself. Um, there is some seriously thick metal on here. So if you're doing this, a lot, a solid weekend for cutting. Um, it takes some serious time. Uh, we even used a torch on some of it and it is still insanely time consuming. Um, the one thing I did find that makes this way easier is when you need to get rid of the, uh, the bushing there, you can cut that section of the housing and you can actually just remove the bushing and that gets a massive bulky piece right out of the way. And that lets you get in here and really just kind of work around. And it's a lot of small cuts to be able to get to the next angle, but we're, uh, we're making progress. We've got quite a bit cut off. Um, so we got to finish up this, then we got to shape this, and then we got to mark two inches from here in draw our line all the way around and then we got to take a cutoff wheel and cut that whole chunk off and once we cut that off we'll then finish cleaning up this outer bit right here that was where the uh i think this was a sway bar mount um so we'll finish doing that and then we can set a truss on this thing so i would say probably tomorrow we'll have everything cleaned up just for reference today is saturday so tomorrow afternoon we will continue working here. We will finish cleaning the rest of this up. Um, there's a good bit of crap on the underside here. Um, so once we get done with that, we're then going to flap wheel and clean up the entire thing. Um, stuff like this, we're actually not even gonna worry about cutting off because it's gonna come off with that chunk. So that's gonna be a real interesting one tomorrow. We'll make sure to document that real well, just so you guys can kind of see how we're doing it. But overall, it's just cut, cut, cut some more, uh, cut until your grinder quits, go buy a bigger grinder, um, you know, all that fun stuff. So we'll, uh, we'll touch base in a minute and uh, I'm gonna get back to cutting. back to overland one ton zj part i can't remember i think it's four? Four, four but anyway today is the day we make a very crucial and important cut we have to take two inches from here in cut that completely around and then knock that off and then we're going to finish up that last bit once we've done that we're going to finish cleaning this up we cleaned it up really nice the other day and then it snowed and well now it's rusty so all that work down the drain, that's kind of why working outside sucks. Like everything out here that had grinding dust on it is now red. So, and, and we live in Utah, not the South. So stuff takes a while to rust out here. Yeah, it was, it was pretty impressive after the snow. I looked outside and I was like, oh God, what happened? But anyway, we're gonna mark this um, really simple. Red paint pin, Stanley made in America tape measure. It doesn't get much simpler. So we want two inches. So we're literally just gonna mark two inches in a bunch of different spots all the way around this tube. And then we're gonna get to cutting. We're marked. We have our red line completely around here. We got that thing ready to cut. So now for the somewhat scary part of this. Um, I mean, the truss is gonna accommodate that and there's plenty of tubes still left in there. And, we are going to trust the whole thing, so not a huge deal. Now we just got to try and make as straight up a cut as we can and then lop the rest of that off. One thing I want to touch on real quick is how I went about this. I took a, a nice simple pass around the whole axle and I just did a nice light line. So you can kind of see we just took it nice and easy right around the whole thing. 
except for right here. I cut through that whole cast bit, but that allowed us to have one nice line instead of a bunch of different ones. So now we'll take it nice and straight all the way through there. And then we'll try and lop in on a few bits there. And then we're gonna use essentially just a hammer and a chisel. And we're gonna get in there and we're gonna try and crack it off. So let's uh, keep cutting. guys we are there the whole truss can now get laid on this thing we cut our two inches off right here we got all this nice and cleaned up cleaned off the top so I got a little bit of wire wheeling and stuff to do in here and kind of on here to clean it up before we paint it uh, after we're done with the truss but look at that clean tubed 05 plus 60 so now we have to take it from here to there, through this. Well, I'd say that fits all right, wouldn't you? Yeah, for sure. So do me a favor, rotate that or pick that up a little bit. Yeah. Man, that looks so sick. So, just want to make sure we're. So, that all like locks in. If you look at the top, you'll see kind of what I mean. There we go. Um, apparently, something jigs in right here. But you can see on the top sits in here, jigs in, and then jigs in there. Let me see if I can grab a, There's a coil bucket. Here's an upper. So here's the track bar mount. That'll sit like right here. Oh, this is so exciting. I, I am cloud nine right now. Uh, looking at being able to, to put all this together. We are all cleaned and all ready to weld. Um, we are going to take a page out of the bleep and jeep handbook here um, shout out to those guys for kind of pioneering an install video on this um, we are going to tack weld here and then we're going to tack weld to the truss uh to the axle tubes we're not going to pull this thing and weld every single inside bit outside should be plenty this is not a rock bouncer this is not going to see heavy rev limiter usage um, it's an Overland rig getting a set of one ton axles and some 39s. So we're going to fully burn in the outside. We're going to stitch everything in. But for right now, I'm just going to get a couple of tacks in place and get this show going.
up for the night. I am beyond excited about having this. It's on there. Um, I had to do a little bit of grinding over here, so we just won't look at that. But yeah, I mean, decent enough. The hold got all of our, our stuff tacked in place where we need it. Um, we still have the, the fun bit of doing the cast. Um, so we'll have to get the torches out and heat all that up and then take this blanket here. It's actually just a welding blanket. Um, so we'll weld all of that, we'll heat it, then we'll post heat it, and then we'll wrap it in a blanket and let it cool for like 24 hours. Um, so that'll be the last bit of this that I do. Um, tomorrow, hopefully, um, we're gonna go ahead and come in here and we're gonna weld the rest of this. We're gonna get the shock mounts placed. I have some shocks in the garage that I can use for a mock-up width. We'll just pull a spacer and lock that in. Um, we got to weld our outer bits here. We got a bunch of finished welding left to do. However, we're getting somewhere. I am uh, super, super excited about this. I cannot wait. The goal is within seven days to have this axle under the Jeep and have the front end under its own weight. So we're gonna see if we can't make that happen. I'd love to make that Jeep a roller uh, yet again and uh, see what those 39s look like on there. So I'm sure you guys are as anxious as I am to see what that looks like, fail or win. I, I don't really know what it'll be, but it'll be something and we'll all watch together. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, see you guys next week.